Was my promise to go on a break a fake? I don't know. Part of me wants a break, but when, I can't control when I get the dreams. And as I said in the last couple of videos, sometimes I get a dream and I just need it my, in my spirit. I know I need to put it out that day. So I'm just going to go off the flow. No more promises about breaks or tell, saying what I'm going to do. I'm not going to say what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go off the flow because I cannot control the dreams. And sometimes I get important ones that need to be put out immediately. That's the case here. So I'm going to crack into it straight away. Here we go. Boom. All right. So I had this dream about three nights ago. I think I had this dream six on the, on the evening of the 16th of October 2023. 2023 it was within a day or two of that if it wasn't that date just to not that it's that important just to give you a rough idea and in this dream well as usually happens when i have prophetic dreams there were other parts of the dream that preceded this prophetic element to it and those were of a personal nature so it's not relevant and I won't talk about that here, but it was just God giving me guidance about how to navigate some challenges in my life. And then that scene kind of ended. It was like that. It was like cut, cut like a movie from that scene to another scene. Okay, now here's the prophetic bit, and this was very interesting because of the use of symbolism of a time machine, which is kind of fun and interesting, like something out of the Terminator films from the eighties slash early 90s and and it was all this dream is also interesting because god did something that he's done he's done in a few other dreams i've had about world war three where i was referenced in the dream to prophetic dreams of world war three that other christian youtubers have had which they have posted online and I will put the links to these two videos in question, which God referenced in this particular dream in the description box below. So you can go have a look at them. But God's done this two or three times now in other dreams. Uh, for example, the dream I had about fighter jets in uh, defending New Zealand uh, and how New Zealand is going to acquire a, a squadron of um fighter jets before world war three breaks out like katie humphreys from the channel a voice to the nations had a dream about that had, that was god referenced that video to me in that prophetic dream about how new zealand yeah well we, apparently we will get fighter jets before world war three and they're going to defend the country and the most will get shot down that was quite a sad dream there was a guy, he used to have a channel. He actually has removed the channel now, but he had a, a, a dream where he was shown the end of World War Three, and he was shown 2 million Allied troops, 1 million EU troops uh, e, uh, from European countries and 1 million American troops invading Russia. And God showed me that one. And then a video, video from Hoyt Sigmund where Hoyt Sigmund was showing US troops invading Russia from the Black Sea that he was showing Marines landing it on the beach at Sochi. So that's two, two other times where God's done this. So in this case, yeah, not, not the first time it's happened, but all right. So I was, I'm just, yeah, just giving you some background. So yeah, so it switched from the scenes, uh, dream material of a more personal nature that was giving me guidance to help me overcome challenges in my personal life right and then so all of a sudden i found myself in a parking lot in the midwest of the united states and it was it was just a sort of a it was a large parking lot maybe you know it was really big it was like 100 to 300 feet across like a square it was huge so that's like a 30 to 100 meters kind of you know in a square and i could see a large kind of a big box store like we don't have walmart in new zealand but because american culture is so globalized and you know it's the dominant culture globally everyone in new zealand probably most western countries has heard of walmart i'm not sure if it was a walmart but it was a big like kind of a 
or it might have been like a Costco, like it was a store like that in the distance and then some other just stores, um, shops. It was the commercial, it was part of the commercial area of a medium sized Midwest city in the US. And it was in the area of, oh, I think I need to check on a map, I'll do it afterwards. It felt like it was either Montana or the Dakotas. It was one of those three. I think it was more Montana, but it, it was it was that one of those three states. I think they're next to each other. Uh, let me correct myself if I'm wrong on my geography there. But I know, yeah, it was. I know, like, I know, it was right up north in the Midwest, like close to the border with Canada. I do know, I do know Montana. Big Sky Country is on the border with Canada, and I was standing there in this car park. And I was confused and kind of in shock and sort of and awe because I just stepped out of a time machine and I knew this in the dream. And I was just dazed and confused. I wasn't naked like Arnie was in Terminator 2, you know, when he steps out of that spherical time machine. That's a freaking, that movie's brilliant. It's just a freaking work of genius. I mean, James, James Cameron's apparently super toxic. I think he had a... a I think he had definitely had issues where he of like childhood abandonment, which a lot of baby boomers, um, people of that generation do. <laughs> I mean, every generation has its trauma and they have different types. The, the trauma the, yeah, often the trauma for baby boomers is more being abandoned on like emotional unavailability from their parents. Whereas the trauma for millennials tends to be around um, not being able to find jobs and um, not being able to afford a house. So each generation has its own trauma. But um, yeah, just fun, random little tangent. But it, yeah, you, he makes the most amazing movies and just works of pure genius. And oh my gosh, some of his movies are so good. But then, then you read about like what his ex-wives say about him. Yeah, apparently it's pretty difficult. It sounds like NPD, narcissistic personality disorder. Similar to Steve Jobs. It was like creates this amazing thing, but maybe not the best guy, easiest guy to live with to, or to, to marry in terms of emotional intelligence. Not 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 judging, but kind of a I guess a, a uh, troubled troubled genius. <laughs> a lot a lot of geniuses are troubled. Anyway, um, so I wasn't naked when I came out of the time machine as Arnie was in that masterpiece of a film uh, of James Cameron's. But yeah, I was fully clothed, but I, but I was like, and I wasn't, you know, like I didn't have a mission. I didn't know like, boom, I'm here to, you know, protect the sky. I'm, I'm on this mission. No, I was just confused. So uh, I was just standing there confused and a young American guy, he was of, uh, you know, European descent. So he was white and he would have been about mid 20s between the ages of 23 and 26 he saw that I was confused and he walked up to me just to approach me to give me some assistance and he, he said like hey wait what's going on are you right I said I was just kind of rubbing my eyes I said I, said, I can't believe this and I said uh, I've just come out of a time machine and I don't know where I am I, I said I think I'm in this is the United States isn't it and he said yes it is and then I said, what year is it to him? That was my first question. Uh, you know, I just want to establish where I am, what year it is, because I, yeah, Pri priorities. And he told me, it's 2043. And I said, wow. And then he said, well, what, well, what, do, you, what do you mean? He said, he said, what year did you come from? And I said, 2020. And then his jaw dropped. And then I said, well, that, because I, I knew in the dream, in the dream I could kind of access information 20, I could act 10 to 10 to 20, 10 to 20%. I had the ability to access information that I, know, that I know consciously about all these events in the war and my waking life, not the full amount, but in the dream I was able to kind of partly tap into that part of my brain, even when I was in the dream talking to this guy. So I said, hey, the, that must mean the war is finished, that World War Three is finished, right? And I, and I said, how long did it go for? I asked him and he said, 20 years. 
And that was interesting. And I'll get to that because I'll, I'll give the interpretation afterwards. I just want to describe the dream, then I'll do an interpretation and a little discussion afterwards. So, and then I was kind of, some, there were some cogs ticking over in my brain after he said that. And then, I mean, that was pretty much it. And then um, there was the message that there's a message that was a little more personal, but I will mention this briefly, well, briefly as I can, uh, because it does tie into the story of this channel and how it was created because I developed these more mm, attuned and uh, I, I developed my skill in as a dream Christian mystic dream seer as a result of the trauma of financial abuse which I've been dealing with from my immediate blood family. Um, so that's like the family abuse, abandonment, and trauma. I'm not a victim. I have been victimized. I don't have a vic vic I don't have a victim mentality. I have a victim mentality. So accept and assert instead of passive aggressive. And I don't. Yeah, but it, it has been it has been tough. But I'm going to win, and I'm I know I am. I'm confident, quietly confident. But uh, yeah. I'm just going to throw this in here because you might not think it, I just want to explain this because some people think like, why is he talking about this stuff in his personal life or uh, when it's not related to the channel? Well, it is related to the channel because the channel wouldn't have existed if it didn't, if it wasn't for this chain of events in my personal life. So, um, and there's a, there's a shared message of hope. Oh yeah. And there's one other thing I want to add, actually, I almost forgot to mention it before I, I move on to the next part. So I asked the, and the guy said, he said, yeah, we, we're going to need to completely rebuild the country. He said, he, he said, like, yeah, we, the war, he said, yeah, the war's over. Yeah, it, 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 it lasted 20 years. And I knew in the dream and I could see that our side had won. And it's interesting to point out that this part of the United States was relatively unaffected. I could see some buildings that were damaged and destroyed nearby, but it was like, it was quite interesting and clear symbolism that there were very large buildings near me that were completely intact and that were undamaged. But, but that was just in this part of the United States. But the US had won, the allies had won, and we knew we'd you know, won the war. And there was this kind of feeling of like, like just exhaustion and war weariness and kind of, a, a mixture of like a bittersweet mixture of sadness of loss, but but also um, elation and triumph at the fact that we'd won in the end our side, and yeah, like I, I knew it. We both knew had the understanding that the war was over by this stage and that the allies had won. But he said, "Yeah, we're going to completely need to rebuild this country from the ground up," and he said about you know about seventy five. He didn't actually say about 75%, but that was given to me. That was downloaded to me in the dream. It, the US infra and the infrastructure of the United States as a country, like highways, cities, you know, like sewage, airports, or, you know, all like the things that, not the landscape, but the human world, the, the society, you know, that the physical reality of the human society of the US as a country was 75% obliterated so that yeah he said we're going to need to rebuild the country from the ground up completely rebuild that was the last thing he said all right so then now i'll move on to the spit which gets a little there's a little personal thing i'll add so then yeah I, and then i said look i said to him this was surprising i said oh yes it did i i just need to i i don't know why i'm here look i, I to be honest with you i just need to get home i need to get back to new zealand can you help me uh, and then he he, he was kind of like helpful, but he said, "All right, well, I can get get, get drive you to the airport." But he, he didn't offer to. He said, "You're gonna need to pay me." He said, "Like it's gonna be like fifty or sixty bucks." And I was, I was like, "Oh, okay." Well, I was hoping he might do it for free. Um, that's nothing. That's not saying anything against Americans. That's God subtly emphasizing that, despite all my issues with New Zealanders, I'm, I'm a mix of Spanish and Kiwi. They are still my people. It is still my home country. So he said, "Okay, you're gonna you're gonna need to get to this airport nearby." Uh, it was somewhere in the Midwest. And then he said, "From there, take a flight to LA, and then from LAX." Probably LAX won't exist in the future, actually, after the war. But he, that's just what he said in the dream. You'll be able to get a flight to Auckland. And then, so I did that. And then I got back to, I flew from Auckland to Wellington. And I came back to Eastbourne in Wellington, where I grew up. And I went back to the house where I grew up on Aurora Street in Eastbourne. 
which was actually sold in 2019. My family lived there from 1992 to 2019. So my family, I mean, I moved out long before 2019, you know, growing up. Uh, but they lived there for almost 30 years. So this place is like, in, in this lifetime is very much just, just what I see as home. I have so, so many memories, you know, it's just like, it was the nest basically, a place of, it was mostly just very happy, positive memories up until the death of my father when I was 15 years old. And after that, it was, the life was pretty sad and dark. Uh, and it just collapsed into a mess in the end. Um, and that in the end, yeah, my family turned on me like a pack of rabid wolves, abandoned me and left me for dead. And, and then were trying to actively take me out and destroy me. Um, and yeah, I've been in a situation of financial abuse, which is why I'm in this health crisis. And this is that's been the situation's been going on for 20 years. I've been I've been in survival mode since I was 15 years old. It's the reason I'm, I don't have a career. It's because I've been trying to deal with this crime in my family and crime and abuse. And um, so I just finished it off. So anyway, yeah, I went. I walked out so up to the front of the house, that house I grew up in, and I said, "Hey, is." Uh, and this beautiful girl, beautiful girl came out. New Zealand, New Zealand European. She was she was so beautiful. She was about nineteen years old, and she had these bright, sort of clear, greenish eyes. Me and my twin sister both have green eyes, and she had this light blonde hair. Uh, but she was this godly, godly woman. She wasn't really promiscuous. Uh, New Zealand is really has been really degraded by the social engineers. So it's um, the average number of women that men that a woman has slept with in New Zealand is 20. It's the only country in the world where, according to surveys, most most women have slept with more men than men have slept with women. And that, that New Zealand has the most promiscuous woman in the world. They also drink, swear, and take drugs a lot. And the men do it just as badly, but the women have been programmed to be to do very self-destructive things which are very bad for them and which make them miserable. But, and this is just the product of a country which has abandoned God. Uh, and so most men in New Zealand aren't godly and most women aren't either. And it's a pretty dark place. And it's not common to find a beautiful young woman who, who doesn't, you know, go out and basically act like a prostitute, be a prostitute for free. Uh, and, 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 the, and it's hard to find a guy who doesn't do the same, I should add, not pointing fingers at the woman. Anyway, but this woman wasn't like that. This girl, she had this beautiful, she had that godly energy, had the Holy Spirit in her. Such a, and, and she was about 18 or 19. And I said... I said, uh, hey, is Nina here? Uh, that's the name of my twin sister. And she said, no, why do you ask? I said, because I'm, I'm, I'm Nick. I'm her brother. And then she looked at me and she's stunned and she said, oh. And then I realized, and then she said, Nina's my mom. And then I was just had the shock realization. It's like, oh, wow, this is my niece. And I just wanted to throw that bit in there because and despite all this crap, I'm in this horrible family war. That was like there was God showing me on some level. I don't know if that was literal, but there's hope in the end. Like I will have reconciliation in a family in the future. Me and my sister don't get on, but maybe maybe if I can maintain relations with my sister such to the extent that I have a good relationship with this niece in the future, which I may be having apparently. Like God was just showing me that hang in there, you'll have a family again one day. And it's just just like it was saying, you know, to the US, hang in there. We've got this horrible war coming, but you're going to win. It's all going to work out in the end, and uh, this is these are confirmations of the dreams of. Uh, I'll put the links in the description box below. Jan de Villiers was shown that yeah, the U.S. will be seventy five percent destroyed. They'll need to rebuild after the war. Jesse Champ was shown the war will last around twenty two. This American Christian. I'll have to do a second part to this. That's okay. Um, Jesse Champ from who's an American Christian preacher was shown that the war will last 22 years, running from 2022 to 2044. Okay, I'm going to stop here because I'm about to run out of space. And then uh, to, be on to do this full justice, I am going to need to do a second part, and that will be more the discussion and the interpretation. But this is an important dream, so, you know, like... Uh, 
where possible i do make the videos shorter but sometimes they need to be longer to be to have yeah you know, to do the justice and to explain everything so i'll, I'll stop now then i'll i'll pick up with part two